Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, <clears throat> thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business. Ooh. Forgive me, I have got the worst headache right now. Sometimes I suffer from migraines, and when I get them, you basically just want to be in the dark. You want complete quiet. You just don't want anybody to even touch you. And I don't know if that was let on because of the way that game went last night. That was literally gut-wrenching. <sighs> that was terrible. I almost don't know what to say. The defense... They did all they could, and it was clear watching the Texans' offense, which our defense somehow held them 19 points, that they're playing on a whole nother level. When you see their wide receivers, the separation, the ability to catch the ball in traffic and to hold on to the ball, that they're A. <laughs> We're somewhere around D, <laughs> bordering on F in comparison. You know, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I always like to look for the positive. We lost that game. Gut wrenching. The battle for Texas. You know, our, our next door neighbors now own us. Offense just can't get it together. We're dejected. But tonight, if the Redskins lose to New Orleans, in New Orleans, which is a tough place to play, we didn't lose anything. Clearly, our division is not the division everybody thought. You know, they said, well, the Giants are going to be better with Barkley, two-time Super Bowl MVP Eli Manning. Well, psh, scratch that. Eagles, Super Bowl champion, built for the long haul. Great quarterback situation. They've got two. Great running team. That defense. Psh, Scratch that. The Redskins will find out more tonight about, but the Redskins, well, they're still the Redskins. This may be one of those years when you think back to mm -hmm. the NFC South when Carolina won the division at 7, 8, and 1. It very well may be something like that that may win the division. I'm talking 8 and 8, 9 and 7 will probably win our division. So it's not over with by any stretch of the imagination. You're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination because we all have to play each other. And if there's one thing you can say about the Cowboys is we've actually had a really good division record over the last few years. But with that being said, we got to do a hell of a lot better than what we're doing. Let's listen to Jason Garrett' response on fourth down in overtime. Long uh, one, you know, we, we had it, we had a third and two, and we didn't make much on it, and uh, we just felt like at that point in the game, the way our defense was playing, uh, the idea was to pin him down there. Uh, Chris did a great job with the punt; they got the ball in the ten yard line, and hopefully, you make a stop and you win the game with coming back the other way uh, with a game winning field goal. Yeah, they did a good job. They loaded up in there, and they did a good job up front. Uh, we weren't consistent running the football uh, inside, uh, really throughout the game. Uh, I thought our guys battled. I thought they fought. I thought Zeke ran hard a couple times. He almost came out of there, but uh, not as consistent as we wanted to be. Okay. The better this off. Sorry. This is going. Herein lies the problem with Jason Garrett. More times than not, I'm sorry, um, everything is so conservative. Now listen, Dak is having a hard time. 
Clearly, the Cowboys made a mistake thinking that we can just plug in anybody off the street at receivers and tight end, and we're going to be okay. We've got issues with the offensive line. We've got all of those things that are all kind of there together, but other teams have to deal with the same stuff. I, for one, have never been a Jason Garrett guy. When Wade Phillips was fired, I thought that he should go as well because he was part of the staff that was part of that team that still collapsed. For whatever reason, Jason Garrett has is the Teflon guy. No matter what, Jerry seems to settle for mediocrity. And clearly the whole plan, like I said, of we'll just get some guys and throw them out there and we'll be okay. We'll just get a Kellen Moore as a quarterback coach when you've got a young quarterback that needs to be coached up. We'll stick with a Scott Linehan that has never done jack in the NFL with this series. But it was that play right there that sets up everything about Jason Garrett. Let's just run. It's two, two yards, third down. Let's just run Zeke right up the middle. You know that they're keying on Zeke. You know that Zeke's body is not there. He limped off the side. He was injured last week after running, you know, like a madman. That's where, like, Mike Shanahan used Terrell Davis, who had been knocked silly, couldn't see, as a decoy. Why not go ahead Fake it to Zeke there in the middle. And take your quarterback, who's 6'3", 240 pounds, built like a linebacker, and take him around the end. Why not have Austin fake it to Zeke, pop it to Austin, end around. Try something different than you usually do. And maybe you get the first down. This loss goes on the whole team. Believe me, I do. It, 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 everybody, you can go around and look at all kinds of things. You know, from popped up passes to Dak being laid on throws to the offensive line, uh, wide receivers. I mean, it's everybody. But we've changed everything on this team but one thing. And I didn't want to do coach changes and talk about Jason Garrett because what I said at the end of the season, uh, summer was Jason Garrett's our coach. We can't change that. Let's evaluate it at the end of the year and make changes then. Because he ain't going anywhere. So talking about Jason Garrett is like pounding sand. You're not going to do anything. It's not going to change. But Jerry Jones, you got to take a hard look at what you have right now. That offense, right at 16, 16, our average, 16 in the modern era of football, points-wise. You got a defense. Your defense stepped up to the plate against an offense that clearly is head and shoulders better than what we got. And I can't say that they honestly have, well, they do. They have better receivers. And Sean Watson looks a hell of a lot better than Dak Prescott. But your defense answered the call. Your defense stood up. And finally just wore down in overtime. But then, as a coach, you've seen how this game has gone. It's fourth down and two. You're around midfield. Chances are, you punt to them, you're not going to get the ball back. They only need a field goal to win it. At that point, you have to decide to say and man up and say, we're going to impose our will. We're going to get this first down. And we're going to score and win this game. That's confidence. That's belief. That is a team-changing type of event. Because when you have something like that, big momentum change, a come-from-behind when you've been left for dead, 
it can set up the rest of your season. But see, that's not in Jason Garrett's DNA. Taking a chance, conflict, getting out of your comfort zone are things that Jason Garrett will not do. And that's why we're stuck on stupid, stuck in the middle. Yeah, we'll have a few, you know, a few good seasons here and there. But you have to take risk on players. You got to take risk in play calling. You have to innovate and do something different. Take a look around the NFL. Andy Reid will always throw something at you that you've never seen. Bill Belichick. Somehow they continue to win. Somehow they coach their players to win. Somehow they develop players to win. We're not getting that. And I just can't understand why this kind of stuff is acceptable. I know the trolls will be back. And that's fine. I'm going to be here. I'm always here. But the Cowboys need to get together. Jerry, Jason, Scott Linehan. They need to get together and do better than what they've done. You've got to do better than this, son. All the fans out here who support this team deserve better than what we're getting right now. And they need to make a change, if for nothing else, for change's sake. I'm tired of hitting my head on the wall every damn year and listening to Jason Garrett's same press conference over and over again, basically saying why we failed. And all you have to do is just insert different team name, and they all look alike. Today, Jerry, you better take a hard look around at the guys that you're trusting and come up with a plan. I'm Mark Holmes. We'll be live streaming tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern, and it won't be quite as much fun as last Monday. That is, unless the Redskins start getting their butts kicked. I will see you guys later.